Hey guys, taking a look here, piggybacking off of what I was talking about in my previous breakdown of, of Chapman and my breakdown of Yamamoto is grouping guys based off their body type, based off the type of mover they are being um, accelerator or what I like to call accelerator and drivers. So this is what I have as a personal identification system. If you're watching this video on YouTube, head over to the description, pick up a link that'll take you to the full accelerators and drivers, or you can just search my YouTube for more content on accelerators drivers. But by no means an absolute system, I wanted to implement something that painted a decent picture based on the confusion surrounding where somebody's mechanics should start, right? A younger kid should start when it comes to like how he organizes, how he moves, his specific goals for his specific body type. Now, we can go on all day about everything that goes into it, but I'd encourage you to go check out that article or go check out some more old content on that to get a pretty good understanding for yourself. But what I wanna do is I wanna look at this big donkey, Mason Miller. He's uh, making national headlines for throwing the hardest out of everyone in the big leagues right now. I don't know the official stat, but I want to say like he has the most 100 plus mile an hour fastballs. But his mechanics, I'll play it through, but his mechanics are a really good visual as to like sometimes this system of accelerators and drivers doesn't need to be necessarily based off solely your body type. Okay. I think uh, Mason Miller, let me get a little biography. Exact height and weight, 6'5", 200 pounds. And based off looking at this guy, <laughs> he is not 200 pounds. There's no freaking way that this unit is 200 pounds. And I've lied in a, in a bio before, so I've been there, but you're not fooling anyone. This guy's arms are the size of my thighs. I'm gonna play his mechanics through, open side, and then we're gonna talk about a few things that I'm seeing. Okay, so right off the bat, right off the bat, like not even slowing it down, the first things that jump out to me are his uh, reliever going from the windup, rhythmic flow. I talk about this a lot in uh, the initial move, having some rhythmic flow with the hands to sync up with the feet. At the end of the day, as pitchers, as throwers, like it, it really does come down to the importance of like the hand syncing with the feet, feet anchoring where the hands are in space. Like that's kind of the biggest thing in terms of really delaying the energy sequencing to get the most in the, the maximum amount of energy production as possible, which is interesting because this is going to be what we're going to see at a Mason Miller. So the first things that jumped out, like I said, the hands and the feet working together anything in the uh, the initial move that has some rhythmic flow i think just does so much goodness for what we're seeing down here as our as our front foot gets close to anchoring down into the ground i all, i really do believe that that is a uh, byproduct of something rhythmic in the initial move right so we give a rhythmic move in the in the opening stages of our delivery we stay rhythmic throughout the entire delivery we're going to set ourselves up you know, to stay pretty rhythmic throughout the entire drive phase and into landing. Now, second thing, obviously, that jumps out with Mason Miller is the fact that based on his body type, based off the how the dude looks, doesn't skip freaking chest day, you would think that he's going to be somebody that is going to spend more time in the back, right? He's going to spend more time in the load phase because he's a big donkey bullpen guy and he needs to produce mass amounts of force into the ground. That's not the case though, right? So like we forget sometimes that just because you're big doesn't necessarily mean you're a driver type. Doesn't doesn't necessarily mean that your body wants to, you know, load and put force into the ground without really getting going forward because we're seeing this with Mason Miller like he has no loading phase, right? So like this is the general appearance of somebody's delivery. I think in, in 2024, when there's so many like avenues for mechanical analysis stuff nowadays, and this is one thing that really paints a picture for like, oh, this is bad, right? This heavy internal rotation of this drive leg, whereas like a lot of times we see favoring external rotation, right? Like the vertical shin and all these like terminologies being a superior move, but that's not necessarily the case, obviously with Mason Miller in terms of just potential power output. Something that Mason Miller does extremely well is the amplification of acceleration, 
So I talk about this a lot. If you guys go to my YouTube playlist, what is it called? Mechanical analysis previews. Those are me working with my online remote clients. You'll find a ton of stuff on this, this move as we go forward and the increase of acceleration, how that can amplify the timing of which the hand has to separate down up. I've called this move since about COVID the velocity enhancing move. Now I need to specify and be very clear with this move. In my opinion, if you're just to ask me, like, I hate to answer this, but if you were to ask me my opinion, like, Hey, what's a, what's a good move to essentially like force your body and your arm to throw harder, be freaking late. Like I said, I hate, I don't want you guys like to, to take this advice because I think there's, there's potential for, for injuries to occur. But if you look at guys that, that do throw really hard, so I call the velocity enhancing move, the timing, right? This fine line timing of like not being too late to where you're dragging, but not being too early where you're rotating prematurely. It's the fine line. And I don't have a great visual here of it because the back foot gets cut off, but the fine line of the hand flipping up in relation to the front foot anchoring down. So now as he obviously gets a ton of acceleration, right, as he's reaching peak leg lift, right? Like this is what I call catching the fall. A lot of guys will catch the fall or a lot of guys will initiate like more of a fall into their drive phase. And you can see as Mason Miller, like he's not, he's not holding onto his loading phase of his drive. Like he's basically just, hey, I'm a big freaking dude. I can use the slope to amplify the acceleration down. Then you're then you're just basically talking about like, all right, well, can you block that with your lead leg to send up? And can you time out the 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 hand coming up? Right. So going back to the velocity enhancing move, this is the fine line, dude, because again, I know this video, you know, can't, I, I got to tell you guys, I, I spent probably a whole day just looking over MLB.tv, going over freaking games, seeing if someone would give me a better mechanical, you know, slow motion during one of the broadcasts, but I got nothing, but we got this during the Texas game. And so I know you can't see the front foot, but like he's late as F with his overall throwing arm, right? If you just looked at where the front foot was in space. But due to the fact that he's picking up a lot of acceleration, he's gonna do a good job of catching that fall. Like his head stays center, right? It's not so far out over the front shoulder that you're just accelerating so much that you're not gonna be able to catch anything. He does like, it's probably the perfect combination of mass amounts of acceleration and a super delayed path for the hand to essentially force the dang thing to get from down to up and ready to release freaking fast. And I did this study when I was coming back from lat surgery on basically like, okay, well, what happens if I do delay my hand and I don't take it out of my glove until like middle point of the drive phase? These are some of the things that I've found throughout that process was one, the hand is going to force efficiency. It's like the time sensitive task orientation where like you only worry about getting the task done in a time sensitive manner, right? So ground balls, outfield throws, stuff like that. The path in which the hand takes has to be the most efficient path. And especially if you do something like that with a weighted ball, you're really going to feel it. Um, and then two, not only does it have to find the most efficient path to protect against the threat of blowing your elbow out, but it, uh, it also has to speed the heck up from the point in which it's down to the point in which it's in that cock ready loaded position to fire. Now the question becomes like, well, shouldn't everyone do this? Not necessarily, because if you don't have a lot of prerequisites to absorb the amount of force that this, these types of mechanics call for, then it's going to be, it's going to be tough. The good thing is, is like, he's gotten to a point where he's picking up a lot of this energy from his delivery. And I would say like, this is the testament to pitching mechanics in general is the fact that like, if this were one of my clients, I would say like, we might need to make a few mechanical adjustments because of the sustainability. Right. And again, I don't know Mason Miller. I don't know what he's articulating in his head in terms of his attempting to, to organize in his delivery. I don't know if it's organic or if it's cueing, but the way he set himself up is 
really good for his specific task being a reliever. I mean, I'm really impressed in the in the sense of like his command because guys that typically will delay the arm swing and force the arm to to speed up if it's close <laughs> in proximity to the front foot anchoring down, right? But again, you can't really see in this particular video he's getting so much freaking arm speed due to the lateness of which the hand separates. And it obviously like you can see things at the end of his delivery that are extremely efficient, very Verlander like. Right. Rhythmic moves early allow for consistency late. Okay. This is probably one of those things that really helps him match that consistent timing. Right. Now notice the thing that he does do, right? So we know that if we are gonna delay the arm and force the arm to speed up at the very last second to increase this arm speed, then what we need to do is we need to break our hands at a later point. A lot of guys break their hands when their lead leg will descend, right? Again, don't know if it's thought or taught. This could be something that his body's gonna do organically in an effort to maximize the most potential power output. Some of the things that you're gonna have to do, right? So you're gonna break early. You can see his hands break, right? Like if this is the rubber, let's do it. So hand break for him is happening a little bit outside the rubber, right? So if that's the back foot line happening a little bit in the middle of his drive and he's actually gonna get full elbow extension and then come down, boom. Okay, so although I don't necessarily love a lot of things, I think it's a really good example of just because you fit a specific body type doesn't mean you have to sp fit a specific mold. And just because you're a specific body type doesn't mean you can go the opposite in the opposite direction too, right? So the amount of acceleration that you're getting and the delaying of the hand separation, forcing the arm to go fast late, and then obviously just being in the right posture, being in the right positioning with your lower half to do an incredible job, right, of sending that up. So things at the end are gonna be byproducts of things at the beginning, set yourself up. He's had to do probably a ton of reps. I don't know his story, but I'm sure he's had to do a ton of reps of this, this mechanics. So falling, remember falling can be great. We're the only, we're, bleh. We're the only overhead athletes that get to throw on a slope. The slope is going to aid in our acceleration, right? So although like Mason Miller is a good example of almost maybe forcing a higher rate of acceleration, the slope is still going to aid in maximizing or making even more acceleration to be had. So if we can get to the point where like, okay, we know we don't have a good drive leg loading pattern. Let's just fall and like use our mass, right? Six, five, two plus use our mass to amplify the amount of potential force to then block with our lead leg, that's going to be a heck of a catch, right? Falling is not bad. Don't think falling is a negative, like a negative term in pitching, because as long as you fall with stability and you position the pelvis and like the lower half, when you're anchoring down, good things are going to happen. So you fall, heavier guys are going to be a little bit better when they fall because they're catching more, more momentum. Yeah, Mason Miller.